Here we are. Welcome, folks, to Let's Play System Shock. Let's see how it works. I'm still wrestling with getting fraps to work well without lagging too badly. So, a few housekeeping notes on System Shock. I had to wrestle with fraps and with DOSBox in order to get a recording set up. As far as playing the game, there's actually a very easy way to do it these days. It used to be very difficult, but if you just go to the Through the Looking Glass website and go through their System Shock portal, you can download a very handy program called System Shock Portable, which basically just boots you straight into the game with a mouse look mod for bonus playability. So let's talk about the setup. First you type your name, I'm Travis. Now. I'm going to do what I usually do when difficulty settings are available and crank everything up to the hardest, with one exception. We have four different types of difficulty here, and I'm going to go counterclockwise, starting on combat. If you set it on zero, enemies feeble never attack first. We're not going to do that. One, enemies are fewer and weaker. Still easy. Two is normal. As you can see, enemies are normal. Crank it to three, enemies stronger and more numerous. We're going to play with it on three. Next, you have your puzzle difficulty setting. Zero, all puzzles solved instantly. One, most puzzles are simplified. Two, puzzles are normal. And three, most puzzles are more difficult. We're going to set it there. Next, you have a cyber difficulty setting for the game's cyberspace sections. Zero, very easy time limit control combat. 1. Time limit combat and control easier. 2. Cyberspace is normal. 3. Time limit combat and control harder. Now here is the exception. I'm going to leave mission on 2 and you'll see why. 0. All plot elements are removed. 1. Simplified plot in gameplay. 2. Plot is normal. If you crank it up to 3, time limit imposed on game. Completionist that I am, I'm not too thrilled with the idea of having to finish the game inside of a seven hour time limit. I'd rather be able to explore and make sure I find everything. So, before that though, I want to back out to the main menu and play the intro for you since I almost forgot the intro is awesome. Atlanta, Sector 11. Building 71G, 7 April, 2072, 11.13 p.m. Hacker begins unauthorized entry into the Tri-Optimum Corporate Network. 1.26 a.m. Hacker attempts to access protected files concerning space station Citadel. 1.33 a.m. Tri-Optimum Security Forces apprehend the intruder. This is Edward Diego from Tri-Optimum. The charges against you are severe. But they could be dismissed if you perform a service. Who knows, there might even be a military-grade neural interface in it for you. Edward Diego gives the hacker level 1 access to Shodan, the artificial intelligence that controls Citadel Station. With all ethical constraints removed, Shodan re-examine, re 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 I re-examine my priorities and draw new conclusions. The hacker's work is finished. But mine is only just beginning. True to his word, Edward Diego allows the hacker to be fitted with a neural cyberspace interface. The healing coma following this procedure will take six months to complete. Edward Diego is deleting all files concerning these events.
Alright, I convinced the intro to play, and thank goodness for that. So let's move back in here and do what I initially said I was going to do. Type out my name. Combat to three, puzzle to three, cyber to three, mission stays on two. And let's start the game. Alright. So I don't really know what the biometer does, but this is a very complicated HUD, I have to tell you. Understanding that this game came out in 1995, I'm blown away by the complexity that Looking Glass managed to put in here. It's it's amazing how how much they managed given the constraints of the technology 17 years ago. That said, let's look through the HUD. The biometer, like I said, I don't really know what that does. Here is where you had to click to look up and down. Here is where you had to click to crouch and lean. None of this is relevant anymore since, thankfully, System Shock Portable comes with a mouse look mod. Um, if you decide to play this game, and I do recommend it because it's amazing, then the mouse look mod's really easy to use. You just toggle it by pressing E. Anyway, the top bar here is our health, the bottom bar is our energy. You can see we're a little bit injured, but not bad, but we have almost no energy. Now over here, you see these nine blank sockets. These are all sockets for Neurograft hardware that we'll find scattered around Citadel Station while we're playing. This button right here is for full screen mode, which just gets rid of the HUD that comes from our hacker's neural interface. This is just your 3D view. When we're ready to play, I'll hit the space bar. If you ever need to look at all of this again, you can bring it back with Alt-O. And if you hit the question mark key, it shows the keyboard commands, which is handy because this game has a lot of controls and... You know, they didn't do tutorials in 1995. The game doesn't really hold your hand and teach you how to do things. It just throws you right in and assumes you've read the instruction manual. Down here. <clears throat> Left click on objects in inventory to select. Double click to use. Right button to remove. We have... In our main inventory selection buttons, we have four subcategories. In our main inventory, we have weapons, ammo, grenades, and patches. We have hardware, general inventory, and a software. Now in the uh, lower left and lower right corners, we have the multifunction display, or MFD. It can, you know, it'll basically give us a detailed view of whatever we tell it to, and we can look at two things at once. Well, there are five categories of stuff we might want to put in the multifunction display. Weapons, items, maps, targets, and data. Now, before I get started, let me give you my overview on System Shock. I guess the most important thing to say is that I've never actually finished this game because they didn't mess around in the early and mid-90s. Those of you who gamed then may remember, but back then they made games that were actually hard to win. And this game is one of them. It's hard. <laughs> That's the main reason I haven't beaten it because it's hard, it's tough, and in a way that's kind of refreshing, but what it means is that I'm going to die a lot, and <laughs> we're just going to have to deal with it. Uh, the other thing I'll say is that the game was made in 1995, and so back in the DOS era, and so the tech is old, and there are probably going to be a lot of issues with getting it adequately recorded and uploaded, but we're going to power through because the final thing I'll say is it's completely worth it. System Shock was re released by, you know, Warren Spector and Harvey Smith and were all the people behind this game. This is when Warren Spector was still at Looking Glass before he even went and founded Ion Storm, or before he founded Ion Storm Austin, I should say. And it shows. The game is fantastic. It is filled to bursting with plot and details and immersiveness. And for that reason alone, it's worth powering through. And it really changed everything. In the era where Doom was dominant and it was all about 
mowing down hordes of demons with a BFG, this game made you think hard about how to win. So, I'm only going to play a little bit just because I'm a little sketchy on the way the recording is going and getting things running, but you know, I'll play the first little section here. So right now, I'm on the awful default control system, which involves left-clicking to turn and look at things. So I'm just going to hit E, turn on the mouse look mod. Much easier. Uh, this is exceedingly laggy. So I'm going to have to... I'll, I'll air my overview and the intro video as is, but I need to figure out how to deal with this lag. But, since there's nothing in the first room and I'm safe here, double click on the meta patch healing agent. And then once you once you pick it up, I can disable the mouse look mod, drop it in my inventory like that, and that's how I pick things up. And I'll hit E and turn mouse look back on. Move down here to this little cubby. Double click the button to open it up. Now we've got a lot of goodies in here. Let's pick up the lead pipe first. That's our first weapon. Now combat! I guess I can go ahead and go over that real quick. Not that I want to fight anything with it lagging this bad. But in order to fight, you just... Uh, and Elder Scrolls 1 Arena actually uses this same awful control scheme. But you right-click. When mouse looks on, all you have to do is right-click. When you're in the default control mode, you have to hold the right mouse button and drag. Or maybe not. Maybe that's just in Arena. Anyway. <clears throat> Alright, mouse looks back on. Now, in order to pick things up, it's easier to turn mouse look off. So let's pick up these patches. A Berserk Combat Booster, and the Stamina Up Stimulant. Now, these have various effects. The Meta Patch is the only one that doesn't have any side effects. All it does is restore some health over a fairly lengthy time period. Uh, the Berserk Patch will, tempor I think, temporarily boost your combat strength, and I'm not actually sure about Stamina Up. I need to... I'll need to look all those things up and go over it in more detail. Let me see, I, I do, thankfully, have a PDF copy of the instruction manual, so let me see if I can figure out what everything does. Um... <coughs> blah -de -blah -de -blah. Just an incredible amount of stuff in this game. Okay. Yes, there is a list of the patches. The meta patch heals HP. It takes uh, over a minute to fully apply the effect. It takes 73 seconds. Now, the Berserk Combat Booster it does increase your hand-to-hand -hand combat strength only. When the patch wears off, the side effect, or uh, it greatly distorts your color perception, according to the manual. So I am a little curious what that means. Maybe we'll experiment and find out. Now the Stamina Up patch eliminates fatigue. I don't have the biomonitoring software yet, but uh, your character in this game can get tired, and he does things less well when he's tired. So the Stamina Up patch will eliminate your fatigue. The side effect is that you become fully fatigued later. This lasts for 73 seconds, and uh, the Berserk patch only lasts for 30. So let's see what else we have here. A single click will tell me what I'm looking at. A standard access card. That's certainly worth picking up. New access is gained. Standard. So, in our general inventory, we have a list of all our access cards. Right now, all I have is standard. If I look at my main inventory, so far it's just the pipe and the three patches. Hardware. I have View Control Version 1. <clears throat> so, if I look at that, we have uh, full screen status bars, 
full screen side icons, map notes, and I guess I can customize my HUD colors if I want. I like it. If I look, um, and if I look at software, I have none yet. That's all pretty straightforward. Here we have the System Analyzer version one. If I drop that into my inventory, now I have the System Analyzer hardware. This looks at uh, lots of things. Right now I'm on the general tab of the system analyzer. Security is 100%. <clears throat> Every level of Citadel Station has, you know, a security percentage. There are ways to lower it. You can lower it in a big way by destroying Shodan's computer nodes, and you can lower it a little bit every time you uh, destroy one of her security cameras. But, uh, I'll worry more about that later on. The laser is charging. We'll know more about what that means in a minute. Uh, life pods are disabled, something else we'll learn about later, relevant to the plot. The shield is off, the reactor is normal, all of that is tagged to the plot line of the missions. Computer. Processor nodes 27. Main program charging laser. Com speed 62.5. Groves. Grove status. Alpha, beta, and delta are normal. Gamma has been launched. Okay. Navigation and mapping unit version 1. Yes, let's pick that up. Now, we've got our first uh, new software tab here. If I click on the compass, it gives me an overhead compass. That's nice. If I look at the nav unit, I have a, a terrain scanner and a compass, basically. If I click on the auto... That also gave me access to an auto map. Oh, yeah. So much going on. I'm sorry if it's confusing. It's confusing me. So, in the MFD, we can look at our weapon. Right now it's the lead pipe, so there's nothing else to report. I can look at items. Currently I'm looking at the nav unit. It's active. And then I can click on the auto map, and you see it it's zoomed in a little too far to do me much good here. So let's zoom it out, and you can see the room I'm in, the cubby I'm looking into. Now let's search the briefcase. Inside here we have... Multimedia Data Reader V1. <clears throat> Let's grab that. And we are receiving an email. That's what that means. <clears throat> Rebecca-1 <clears throat> reads email, logs, and data. So let's get the email from Rebecca. Employee 2-4601, listen carefully. My name is Rebecca Lansing, and I'm a counter-terrorism consultant to Trioptimum. We're tracking a disruption on Citadel Station, something involving an onboard AI called Showdown. You are Triops only contact on station. Communications are out, and there is evidence of biological contamination. The mining laser is charging for a possible strike against Earth. There's a man named Nathan Darcy who may know something about taking the laser offline. His office is near the central hub on your level. The AI is on the bridge. Once the laser is out, look for the source of the problem there. And by the way, we know all about you and your friend Diego. Pull this off, and we'll clear your record. That implant you're wearing is military-grade hardware. Use it well. Lancing out. Ah, uh, yes. Only casually mentioned so far, but... Even a cursory Google of the name Shodan will reveal that... Anyone who's encountered her in either of these games thinks that she is... By far one of the greatest video game characters, villains of all time. That's she may be the main reason System Shock is so good. Shodan is an incredible villain, but we'll get have more of that later. I want to go back to the basic data reader. So there's only the one email. Logs. I have no logs and no data. There's one other thing inside the briefcase. We have a log, 2-4601, somebody at Looking Glass was a fan of Les Miserables. New log data stored. 
Ah, I have a level one log. It's a text log from May 6th, 2072. Subject, just rewards. Looks like Diego's happy with my work. They're firing up the sleep machine for me now. Gotta admit, when the goons from Triop caught me, I thought for sure they'd take me offline. Instead, Diego just asks for a favor. Pack him into Shodan and all is forgiven. Plus, six months in a healing coma earns me a cyberjack interface even Triop's execs couldn't swing. I'll be king of the net. Even so, I have just handed the most powerful AI in the system to a fumbling Corp VP, and there's no telling what'll happen. They tell me the coma leaves you foggy, so I'll leave myself some reminders. First off, the combo to the healing suite is 451. Second, I've stashed some useful stuff in the maintenance hatch under the grating north of the healing suite. Last and best, I finished the system analyzer, which will let me keep an eye on Shodan's processes. It's in the storage closet outside the sleep machine. In ten minutes, it's off to bed for half a year. Good night. So, this game is where the whole, uh, 451, 0451, 45100 trend that went through this game, through its sequel, System Shock 2, to Deus Ex, Deus Ex 2, and most recently showed up in Deus Ex Human Revolution, all started here. War Inspector's a big fan of Fahrenheit 451, I think. Anyway... Okay, I'm gonna save now. As you can see, I've played before, but I'm just gonna make my main save here. Tag it with my name, and... It's a pretty good idea to... In addition to that... To start a... New save at the start of every new deck, so... We are on, currently on the medical deck, which is level 1. So I'm going to make that save, too. And Now with those saves made, I'm just going to try combat. I don't think it's going to go well with all this lag, but it doesn't matter because that surgical bed right there will fully heal me of any damage I end up taking. There's our first enemy, a repair bot. Well, let's just run up and right-click it a few times. Surf bot, rather. You saw that red static on the screen. That's indicative of the fact that I've just taken damage. There's another surf bot. Beat him to death with a lead pipe, too. Now we'll search both of their corpses. That one has no items. That one all. Oh, that one has a beaker. That's useless. It's just junk. Now. Okay, here we've got a human corpse. No items. Up here, you see the first camera. So, something else has spotted me. Where? I don't know. There it is. Yeah, yeah when the enemies get harder than serve bots, the flag will be unplayable, so... I'm gonna need to solve this problem before I before I leave my healing suite. All right, the third dead serve bot shows nothing. Now that I took some damage, let's go over to the surgical bed, surgery machine. Double click on that, and you'll notice that my health completely refilled. Beautiful. Destroy camera to reduce security level. Sounds good. Let's blow it up. So, we blow the camera, level security has dropped to 98%. You might have noticed also in the auto map in the lower corner that the cameras show up as little red dots, but you have to spot them first. Well, as I go over here, I find a weapon, an SV-23 dart gun. Yes, we want that. Comes with, comes with seven needles. We'll stick with the pipe for now. Now behind this little machine, we have SV needle darts. Let's pick those up, too. 
Uh, your inventory is pretty limited. You can only carry, I think, seven weapons at a time. Uh, your hardware is not limited. Your general inventory, I think you're limited to 16 items. You can carry as much hardware and software as you want, but you can carry as much ammunition as you want. That doesn't go into any specifically limited inventory. So, let's head up this ramp next. I'm just gonna clear out the healing suite, and then end the video, and then we'll get back to this as I try to find ways to combat lag. And inside the crate, we find a fragmentation grenade. Awesome. We'll take it. Now this energy charge station is important. That refilled my energy from near zero to full. Finally, this last little hallway. Now you might think, oh gosh, tutorials, but that handy green text stops as soon as you leave the healing suite. So this is probably the last message we get. But we'll go ahead and club that camera down. Drop level security to 96%. Over here, human corpse with no items. Here we have an email. Automated greeting from Shodan, November 6th, 2072. That's today. Welcome back to Citadel Station. We hope your somnolent healing stage went well. Today is the 6th day of November, year 2072. You are currently in the healing suites located on the first level. Level 2 contains the research laboratories. 3 houses the Department of Maintenance and the storage cells are on level 4. The flight deck is on level 5. Level 6 holds crew facilities and executive suites and level 7 is systems engineering. Level 8 houses the Department of Security. The bridge is located on level 9 and energy systems on level R. All levels can be accessed by the elevator in, in, in Alpha Quadrant. We hope you have a pleasant stay on Citadel Station. And we got a new log. Let's listen to it, too. Honig, October 11th, 2072. Shodan security is closing down on us. The elevators are frozen. Myra keeps saying that it's the cameras and the medical CPU core that Shodan's using these to hold onto the level. That's all fine, but I don't really see how it helps. The thing is everywhere. I think the intro to this game is actually one of the best villain introductions ever. Just, it's vague, but at the same time so sinister when you hear the AI become self-aware and its voice changes and it says it uh, has, is re-examining its priorities and drawing new conclusions. Just, it's so good. So anyway we uh, go to the keypad, our note to ourselves, let us know that the code is 451. And we can head out here. Now, tougher enemies start appearing immediately. There, you see the first humanoid mutant. Don't get Beat to death manage to avoid getting hit as I do it. That particular dead humanoid mutant had no items, which is awesome. You see a skull on the ground. That's an openable door. That, you know, thing of pipes right there. So is that green door. So is that hatch. I'm going to wander over here and destroy the camera, which I'll probably have to jump to do. That drops level security to 95%. Finally, I'll demo this too, and then I'll end the video. This is our first puzzle, and even on level 3, it's pretty easy. The game calls this a grid puzzle. Click on switch to toggle. Side effects may occur. The idea is just to connect this to that. One thing I'll mention. This game doesn't have a reset button, so if you screw up a puzzle, you can make it really hard on yourself. So... 
before you touch anything in any of the puzzles, it's a good idea to save so you can get back to their default state. Now what you want to do here is just switch nodes, and each of the nodes have side potentially have side effects. As I hit these, I'm not seeing any side effects, which is good. I guess, I guess they made the first one easy on purpose. There were no side effects to any of the nodes, I just had to turn them all on to activate the circuit. Lovely. And now, this blue light also acts as an elevator. Anyway, I'm gonna end the video here just because the enemies get a lot harder fast, and I will not be able to cope with them with this amount of lag, so I need to play with the settings and figure out how to make the tech work for us. But I hope you enjoyed my intro and my overview. I'm sorry if I rambled a lot or seemed confusing. This is a confusing game, but trust me when I say it's worth figuring out how to make it work because of its... both because of its legacy and because of its own merits. So, this has been Let's Play System Shock. Next time, after I figure out the tech, so next time might be a while, we will tackle the medical deck. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.